All right, so we got 66 orders going out over the weekend, totaling a little under $1,800 in sales. Stick around to the end of the video to find out what sold. These men's dicky shorts sold for $11.16 plus shipping. This Lori Goldstein shirt sold for $12 plus shipping. And this women's Abercrombie & Fitch skirt sold for $6.28 plus shipping. And this Northwest Territory men's acrylic wool sweater sold for $12 plus shipping. So I just wanted to touch upon why it is so important to have a system and a process for you guys to be able to set your reselling business up for success. And this is why I titled the video, How to Get Ahead of 90% of Other Resellers, is because most other resellers do it for fun. They list when they feel like it. So if you have a system and a process that holds you accountable to your goals and to your vision, it's really gonna help you keep on track to really make progress towards getting and hitting your goals. So for me, when I first started, I never had a system or a process. I was yet to develop any type of strategy when I was getting into a reselling business. I really believe that planning and strategizing is important for you to figure out what you even wanna do in your reselling business. What do you wanna sell? What is in abundance in your area? How are you gonna get inventory? I really think it is important to start reselling the things that are around your house that aren't being used. That way you can start liquidating some of the capital that you've spent on those items that you're not using and put it towards inventory that you could see yourself potentially reselling. So you'd be surprised on how many people that I talk to in the reselling game, even locally here uh, at my local church and a couple friends that we have that are resellers, you know, they just really have no like foresight, you know, they really have no vision in, in strategy for their business. So that's why it is so important that if you could just put together a plan, and I'm specifically speaking to the beginners out there, but hey, if you're a intermediate reseller and you've been doing it for quite some time, I just say to you, what is your plan? What, like, what is your strategy? What, what is your goal here in the next few years? I know for me, I always like to compare myself to myself a year ago, you know, and we get into a bad habit of comparing ourselves to other resellers. Don't do that. Compare yourself to how you were a month ago, how you were a year ago. And if you're just making progress and your sales are up, then I applaud you because you are working towards this. And it is not easy. Reselling is not easy. Uh, I say if you work at a job, that's easier. Um, you know, you clock in nine to five, you get told what to do and you clock out at five. Uh, eBay, it never stops, it never sleeps. So. Uh, and all, all that in, in general, Poshmark, Mercari, it's it's 24-7, right? So I just really encourage you guys to start developing some sort of you know system and process that works for you. This process that I have here is not for everyone. You know, stacking up bundles of uh, two, 300 pieces of clothing at a time, knocking out 90 sets of photos, um, you know, that that's not for everyone for sure. And that, that is more of a grind type of business. So I just want to encourage you guys to just develop some type of system that is going to work for you setting up a schedule to hold you accountable so you can hit your goals hey hey we got some ann taylor this ann taylor women's blouse sold for a whopping seven dollars plus shipping we had this women's north face 2xl sweatpants sold for 16.77 plus shipping have you guys ever struggled with determining what your items actually are from the material type to the fabric type to is this a cardigan, is it a tunic, is it a shawl, is it an open front sweater? I don't know. So that is one thing that took me so long to figure out, especially when I was just starting out selling clothing. Case in point, this is why I developed this ultimate guide to eBay item specifics for clothing. In this book is 130 pages of every single item specific found on eBay for clothing to help you guys go further faster in your reselling journey. I made this book specifically for beginners, intermediates out there that want to take their keywords their titles to the next level. I really do believe by studying the items that you're selling, you're going to have a competitive advantage over other people that aren't willing to learn and aren't willing to invest in themselves. So you can find this book linked down below. You can either check out the ebook or you could check out 
um, the hard copy is on Amazon. And I will say, if you do get the hard copy, I do think it's a little bit better because you could have it by your side while you're doing your listing. And I would greatly appreciate an Amazon review just letting me know what you think about the book, what things I can improve on. And um, I just really know that it's going to help you guys. This is something that I wish that I had when I first started out. I was just tired of searching the internet of what's a dol dolman sleeve, what's a flared sleeve, what type of material type is Angora. You know, all those little things do add up and take a lot of time away from your listing process. All right, so we have these Nike women's running shorts sell for $17.95 plus shipping. Let's see. Got it right here. This is why I just love this inventory system. It makes it really easy to pack and pull your items. You can find all of this linked down below in the description from the shelves, the boxes, the poly bags, even the SKU numbers. So that is bringing me to my other point of planning and strategizing is when I first started on eBay, I had everything in these bins. And this is older inventory here. But, um, you know, if I had kept going this way in bin life, it would take me about twice, maybe even three times as long to pull and pack 60, 70 orders. But now that I've switched to this system quite some time ago now, that was a plan that I had to develop and put in place. And yes, it is hard to bite the bullet of buying your first shelf and making all this investment into your business. But I'll tell you, if I didn't do it back then, I would have a much harder time finding orders today, losing orders as well. So if you have a plan to how you wanna store your inventory, and I would highly suggest if you're selling clothing or you know whatever can fit in these kind of uh, boxes in this uh, kind of system, numerical system, I would highly suggest it. You know, if you're selling books, DVDs, uh, toys, whatever it may be, this system is really, really nice and made for you guys, for you guys to keep organized and to really avoid losing orders. So. That is a plan that I had to come up with and develop and figure, okay, if I'm gonna go to this sequential system, how am I gonna find these shelves for as cheap as I can without breaking the bank and ones that won't break as well. And um, also buying the boxes. You know, the boxes are 32 by eight by eight. I buy 200 at a time and that costs two, three, four hundred dollars Each shelf costs a hundred dollars. So. You know, it, it hurts to make that investment, especially when you're just starting out and you don't really see too much money flowing in. But I do guarantee you, once you start to plan on how you want to do your inventory system, it will pay off. You'll get a lot of that time back and you'll also avoid, you know, any kind of issues that come with lifting bins up over and over again. Me alone, just doing that uh, over and over again, uh, you know, I'm all about my health and I don't want to be breaking my back just to pull an order out for someone who paid six dollars for an ann taylor t-shirt right so that is just an example i'll stop blabbing and let's get what let's get back into what's sold these men's amazon shorts sold for 17.95 plus shipping i just listed them uh, last week and yeah they sold pretty fast if you aren't picking up employee stuff taco bell dutch brothers mcdonald's any type of employee stuff, you know, I would stay away from UPS and FedEx and USPS types of stuff um, because you can get a Vero, but other employee gear uh, sells fast and it sells pretty well. Um, I got that from the Goodwill bins and most of the time people are still unaware of like, oh, that's just a Taco Bell employee shirt. I'll pass it up. You may not make a million dollars off of it, but it might sell pretty fast. So if you want some good high velocity items in your store, be on the lookout for any employee gear, apparel, t-shirts, whatever. Hey, hey, we got some Kenneth Cole. This had been listed for a little over a year. These are some Kenneth Cole Chino pants sold for $21 plus shipping. All right, you guys always know that I like picking up similar items. This is by the brand Fakenable. Fakenable, Fakenable, always have a hard time pronouncing that. But these two shirts sold for $33 plus shipping. I wouldn't be picking up this brand used as it kind of has a slower sell-through rate. This just came from a storage unit buyout I did last year and, you know, took about a year to sell. $33 plus shipping, I'm happy with it. Praise the Lord. 
Here's a brand that actually retails for a lot of money, but I haven't found that the resale value is too good. These are actually some linen pants. They did have a stain on them by Tasso Elba. Sold for $9 plus shipping. Not the best price, but uh, you kind of live and learn with these purchases. Uh, now I know not to go out and buy this brand again. Here are some Lucky Brand men's Bermuda shorts. Sold for $15 plus shipping. This women's shirt by the brand Fresh Produce sold for $8 plus shipping. I think this is more like a one size sleepwear shirt. Here are some uh, Polo Ralph Lauren jeans, new with tag. The model is Langley. These sold for $17 plus shipping. Here's just a rock solid brand. I love picking up this brand, the t-shirts, the pants, the jeans, especially uh, Ariat FR flame resistant stuff. These uh, jeans even had a stain on it, sold for $24 plus shipping. So this is a brand that I try to, you know, always pick up and find. I believe this was another Goodwill Bins purchase. So yeah, very nice. Getting into some of the comments that came on YouTube over the weekend, trendy 4 Thread says, Hi Bo, great content. Appreciate you. Thank you for watching. He asks, uh, do you weigh your items while taking photos? So I know there are so many ways to go about reselling, right? Um, you can take your uh, photos and bag your items and weigh them. And that way you know what they weigh and what shipping to do. Um, since I have been selling more and more clothing, I kind of have a good idea of what should be shipped ground advantage and what should be shipped priority. So I do not weigh my items when I'm taking photos. I do not actually don't even weigh my items until the shipping. And usually um, I'm, you know, 90, nine times out of 10, the shipping price is correct. So sometimes I will have to make adjustments, but I do encourage you to just do what works for you. I don't do it that way because I'm trying to just get as fast as possible in my process. So when I'm taking photos, I'm only taking photos, right? I'm not doing any weighing or, you know, anything like that. So, but if that works for you, then I highly encourage you to do that. And it's good to really do that to start so you really get a good idea of like, okay, this sweater, you can kind of feel it in your hand and you can start to know what is under a pound and what is over a pound. And now with this change with Ground Advantage, you know, that really, you know, doesn't even matter much because with Ground Advantage, you could ship things over a pound and not have to switch it to priority or whatnot. But um, that's just what I do. Um, but I do highly recommend to just do what works for you. So if, if it requires you to be weighing your stuff when you're taking your photos, then try it and then try it the other way where you weigh it, you know, maybe when you're doing your listing. All right, this is just a bread and butter sale. These are some Adidas women's leggings sold for $12.56 plus shipping. All right, this men's tank top by the brand Hoka Hay. It's kind of like a motorcycle type tank top with a really nice graphic print, sold for $14.68 plus shipping. Huge shout out to the brand Sonoma. These Sonoma denim shorts sold for $10 plus shipping. This brand's terrible. I would not suggest picking it up. Oh, you caught me, wow. So another reason why you should be planning is to have a system of shipping. So for me, when I just started out on eBay, I started out pretty unorganized. I didn't necessarily have a shipping station, but having some sort of shipping station where you can have your poly bags, you can have your priority envelopes stored away, your tape, your labels, your printing station. So this is important and I know it's kind of like, yeah, Bo, duh, you need a shipping station. Well, it's a thing that we often overlook and I really do believe having a shipping station to keep organized, to make sure that your packages get out on time into the correct address is so important. So having a little organized station so you can keep track of when you're running low on labels, when you're running low on poly bags, the worst thing that can happen to a reseller that starts selling 20 to 30 a day is to be running out of thermal labels. So I just say having an organized setup, having a planned station for shipping is crucial you know you could see this is just basically a desk 
with two little shelves on it. And uh, yeah, I can improve, but I'm kind of just using what I have. So I just suggest to you, especially if you're a beginner, just use what you have. You know, um, having a little organized section uh, is key because you're also planning for the future that maybe you're only shipping three items right now. But if you have a little station set up, you're kind of planning for the future that I'm gonna be shipping 10 items a day. So this is just a simple, overlook thing oftentimes, um, but having a little organized area is key and it helps me stay on top of ordering supplies and when I run low. We had these Nike women's leggings sold for $17 plus shipping. And these Eddie Bauer women's jeans sold for $10 plus shipping. So thankful for just buying those storage units last year. These are still paying dividends. Sold this Chrome Industries bag for $129 plus shipping. The original retail price was $169. Chrome Industries is a great brand. I've sold a few of their wallets for $100 or so. So that's kind of what the logo looks like. Um, just really a blessing. You know, I, I did hold off listing these bags for a while. And now that I'm slowly starting to list them, um, you know, I've found Filson bags, I've found Gucci bags, and these Chrome Industry bags are awesome every time I find them. So if you're ever outsourcing and maybe you're at a yard sale or a Goodwill outlet, um, take a stroll down the bag aisle. Um, this month we've sold about $2,000 in sales on just handbags. Well, this is more of a backpack, but yeah, anyways, love it. What a blessing. Not really a good brand at all, but uh, it's Hollister. But this knit kind of long tunic cardigan sold for $12 plus shipping. Another bag that sold was this Dekine duffel bag. Uh, it's kind of like a surf skateboard brand. Huge bag, had a pretty interesting time taking photos of this thing. Uh, still sold for $39 plus shipping. And usually I'm just shipping these out and UPS ground just because it's a lot cheaper for the buyer, a lot cheaper for me. So yeah, that's kind of how I'm shipping them out. But 99% of my packages go out USPS. All right, getting back into the comments. This was from a video I did a while back when I first started the channel. It was titled, uh, How to Create Facebook Ads to Improve Your Sourcing. Someone commented, said, I love the video, but do you feel like the $1 for tops and $2 for bottoms limits you? So that is what the price I put that I was willing to pay when I ran that ad um, in local buy and sell groups. And yes, you're gonna get people going laughing like crazy, right? Um, but I know that clothing is in such abundance that I have kind of a hard set limit that I'm willing to spend on certain brands. That does not mean that I'm not willing to pay up for other types of brands, but for the brands that I had on the brand list listed in the ad, I'm not gonna go more than a dollar to $2 per item because the brands were basically bread and butter items that I could find all day, every day at the Goodwill bins. So, you know, you gotta have a set hard limit and some standards in your business as far as what you're willing to spend. And putting one to two dollars, yeah, it might have limited me, but for me and my listing goal at that time, I believe I was doing 30 items a day and I was overwhelmed with the messages and how many people were wanting me to come and buy their clothing. So, you know, you're gonna have to set some type of standard as far as what you're willing to pay and, you know, really make that choice in your call on what you want to pay up for. These cut from the cloth women's jeans sold for $14 plus shipping. These women's Abercrombie & Fitch pants that had a hole in them still sold for $17.95 plus shipping. Shout out to all the hat sellers out there. This is an Oakley corduroy men's Castro cap. Sold for, let's double check. Sold for $12 plus shipping. This Ann Taylor linen skirt sold for $11 plus shipping. This is a women's plus size top by the brand Susan Graver. God bless you, Susan. This sold for $10 plus shipping. Another combined order of these Calvin Klein men's dress shirts, still new with tags, sold for $36 plus shipping. And another crucial part and important piece to my business is having a designated area where I could take my photos of the items that I'm gonna be listing for the next day and the next 
few days in advance. So here's just a simple four and a half foot wide by five foot tall piece of plywood with a cotton blanket on it. This is nothing, no state of the art technology with two LED lights on the top and two LED lights on the bottom. So I want to be able to have a designated photo setup where I can reset to zero every day and prepare for the next day's listings. So having a place where it's already set up, ready to go with the ruler in place that I almost dropped, ruler, scissors, we got our uh, lint roller and a couple hangers. It's so important because I want to be able to just jump into my work, get the listing or get the photos done and reset to zero for the next day. So maybe setting up something in your spare bedroom or in your own bedroom like I had when I first started is really going to be helpful to create less friction in resistance when you need to go and take up photo, take photos and you you have to reset up your setup again and do all these things that aren't so fun if you have a place that's ready to go it's going to really allow you to be a little bit happier when you do your photos and you know, you're not going to have to stress about setting things up so another thing to have as a system in a process is to get some sort of photo setup ready to go you know you could see here this is nothing you know that I spent a ton of money on and I do my all my photos vertical flat lay I do that because I don't like you know bending my neck over and being hunched over like that I like to have the garment right in front of me I like to take all my photos and be done and when I'm done with it I can go over here and just set it right on the pile and continue to work through the pile that I'm working through. So having some kind of setup for you guys, especially if you're a beginner, start strategizing. Okay, where am I gonna put my photo setup? Am I gonna, what kind of lights am I gonna order? You know, all these things, um, you know, you can add to down the road. You don't need to spend $500 on lights to start. If you're wanting to get into this type of photo setup, you can find it all linked down below and a little bit goes a long way in helping the channel. So I went to the Goodwill outlet a few weeks ago and I picked up a ton of sweaters. I've already sold several of them. The reason why I picked up a ton of sweaters is because people were leaving them behind. This is just a simple express men's sweater sold for $12 plus shipping. Yeah, it's not going to make me rich but at the same time i really do love picking up items that sell fast that is something that i'm just always trying to improve upon so do you guys ever go to the goodwill outlet and during the off season of summer do you see a lot of coats and jackets and sweaters and cardigans lying around you know there could be a good opportunity for you to make a little extra money if you have the space. So I only say if you have the space to be able to store these items. Um, if you go on Google Trends and type in sweaters, you type in jeans, type in jackets, and search from the past five years, you could see seasonally June is the slowest time for that type of stuff. And now we're heading into July and August where you start to see more search volume for sweaters, for jeans, for jackets in general, globally. So you might want to figure out, hey, how can I bring in new items into my store and how can I find those items? So people are passing up jackets and sweaters and jeans this time of year when it's 95 degrees out, right? So that is a strategy that I've always implemented and vice versa in in the winter time picking up shorts t-shirts linen and silk is going to be a good strategy that i've implemented in my business maybe it can be helpful for you still selling underwear selling a lot of this calvin klein hit briefs these were done in what 2008 2008 so yeah these sold for combined uh, $17.95 plus shipping i had a lot of these and i lotted them up in six which they didn't end up selling very well. So I started breaking them down in pairs of two and they seem to now start selling much better. Like who wants six pieces of Calvin Klein underwear, you know? So more people are gonna be starting to hopefully purchase those cause I have a lot and uh, happy to get rid of those and go and buy more items. So the next item we have is another sweater I got from the Goodwill bins, I think about two weeks ago now. Um, 16167, uh, let's see, okay, we got it. So this is a L.L. Bean lamb's wool cardigan for men, sold for 1536 plus shipping. 
So selling, you know, quite a few sweaters still. It's pretty amazing. But, uh, you know, like I said, go check out Google Trends. More and more people are starting to buy that stuff. Uh, getting ready for fall and winter, even though that sounds crazy when it's supposed to be 90 degrees today. Another system in process is kind of how I'm pooling and packing my orders. So um, I use eBay to really figure out what SKUs to pool. And once I do that, I kind of do it a little differently. I actually go from the first order being in the back here. So this would be those Amazon shorts, uh, 16,966. And then I go forward and then once the box fills up then i just create a new box and go from back to forward i know it's confusing but do it however you'd like i do that because uh when i'm printing the labels in the bulk shipping uh, station i want to be able to just go down each row double check triple check that the item is correct that the buyer's name is correct and i even go to sometimes uh, triple check because the last thing that i want is to get one order out of order and then it kind of messes up everything. So just really developing a system when you're pulling these orders, say you're pulling 10 a day, start organizing it in a way where it can be simple for you when you're printing the labels. This is a Disney women's t-shirt that sold for $10 plus shipping. So every once in a while, I will make a mistake. And this is another sweater that I picked up from the Goodwill bins a couple weeks ago. Um, this is the brand Peruvian Connection. A really good brand. Uh, women, women's sweaters, women's tops. Uh, this, these sweaters usually sell between forty to sixty to eighty dollars. Sometimes even more, depending on the material. This is just a cotton open knit sweater. Actually sold instantly for twelve dollars. Um, every once in a while, I'll make a mistake, and mistakes are great only when you learn from them. So now I know if I ever find that brand again, um, I really need to be more aware. And that's just kind of what happens when I pick up brands that are you know, not always uh, a common brand that I pick up and I will be caught slipping. So always be working on that. Always be doing some research on some brands that you never picked up before. I think that I just really got careless in that moment. I could have definitely sold that sweater for maybe $30, $40. But hey, you know, um, lifelong leaders are lifelong learners, and it's not the best learning uh, lesson uh, that did cost some money. But hey, you know, if I ever find Peruvian Connection, I now know for next time not to price it at $17.95. Shout out to all the shoe sellers out there. We got some shoes getting listed. I uh, don't clean shoes. I don't even really pick up shoes, but um, the last bulk buy I made uh, last week, uh, the lady had quite a few shoes that she threw in. So um, this actually isn't even a sale from that. So I don't even really know why I'm talking about it. But these shoes, these are some Sorrels uh, men's hiking, like, uh, what does it say? Ac and Kenny Mid Hiker Rip Stop, $140. These are brand new. And I actually just sold these for 70 bucks. They're pretty nice. Pretty nice. Um, Sorrel's a good one. It's a good brand. Uh, I like it. Good hiking shoes. Good, good shoes in general. So, you know, I'm not going to be continuing to uh, look for shoes to pick up or buy but if someone wants to throw them in for just a dollar a piece then I'm going to consider it but at, at no time am I ever going to go back to cleaning shoes or cleaning laces none of that I'm not doing it. I'm just going to list them as is and if the shoes are dirty I'm not even going to pick them up so that's where I'm at with shoes there is a great opportunity with shoes high average sale price good sell through rate but you know i'm a i'm a clothing seller so um, i'm pretty much maxed out on shoes i don't think i'm going to be picking any more up just because i don't have really any place to store them also a brand you know i'm just don't like it you know i'm stopped i have stopped picking up this brand this is a forever 21 women's dress sold pretty fast though 15809 is the skew and it sold for $11.11 .11 plus shipping. So it really does depend on the style. You know, this is kind of a lace dress. So maybe if I find some Forever 21 camo or some more dresses, I'll consider it, especially if it's a plus size dress. This is a large dress. So 
yeah, you know, there are some brands that are like, yeah, stay away. But if the material is different and if the, uh, you know, pattern is unique, then I'm going to pick it up. I also sold this random thing. Oh, almost broke my neck. Uh, this was sitting in these boxes back here. A uh, storage unit buyout had a uh, tea kettle. This is a nice tea kettle. We have already a tea kettle, so this, you know, we didn't need it. Um, but now it's going to be used. Someone bought it uh, for $44.95 plus $20 shipping. So, yeah. I'm, I'm just, it is a blessing to just be a reseller. And, you know, if you're an everything seller, I get you. I feel you because it's fun. It's fun to go out and the thrill of the hunt because you, when you just are so niche down and you, and you actually like going out sourcing and, and you, the, the treasure hunt is a really good thrill for you, I get it. I totally get it as to why, you know, you're an everything seller and there's nothing wrong with that. So when I sell a thing like a tea kettle, and just some random things that I just normally wouldn't go out sourcing. Uh, it also just brings me back to the days when I was an everything seller. So this is an American Eagle men's t-shirt. Let's see what it sold for. Oh boy. Uh, $14.36 plus shipping. So these jockey men's underwear trying to show the date you can't see it there but these are made in 1999 so vintage jockey men's underwear these sold for 27 dollars plus shipping all right just got done answering a few questions in our discord and if you're wondering what i'm even talking about marcus dixon and i have done a reseller mentorship we are just about to hit 50 active members growing their stores applying a lot of the tips and principles that we apply in our business you can check it out link down below we're offering a seven day free trial of our reseller coaching we provide nine hours a week of zoom coaching answering questions holding you accountable helping you find inventory products Products, helping you structure titles and keywords. Included in that is an eBay store review, as well as a guide for eBay item specifics, as well as a reseller spreadsheet. So if you do like the community and you're liking what you're seeing, it's just a dollar a day after that. We are really passionate about helping you guys go further faster to your road to six figures, because I believe it is at that six figure mark where you can really start to make that jump from your nine to five to maybe going part time, you know, at your job to maybe starting to get into more reselling. So like I said, link down below. We'd love Love to see you there. This is a vintage Patagonia men's button-up shirt, sold for $27.95 plus shipping. This is the brand Title 9. Not the best brand, but this is a wool women's pullover sweater, sold for $13.97 plus shipping. Here's a pair of men's Kenneth Cole pants, sold for $15.90 plus shipping. These men's 926 pants, sold for $10.77 plus shipping. This is just a vintage long sleeve men's t-shirt by the brand Cotton to Wear. It sold for $17.95 plus shipping. All right, now my next system and process for you guys is setting up a designated area for, do, for doing your listings, for auditing your listings, for checking on your eBay work. I have here a sit stand desk. This is something you don't necessarily need, but in the long run, if you do end up doing a ton of listings, you are gonna want to be able to do the best that you can to be as comfortable as you can when you do your listings. Um, you don't need three monitors, though I would suggest having at least two monitors, one monitor to do to have your photos open while you're doing your listings. And I just really think that that's gonna be helpful for you guys to speed up that process. I wanted to be able to get my listings done between one minute and two minutes. And that is a really nice goal to have, even though you know when you first start out, it may take 10 minutes for you to do a listing. Just know on faith that you are gonna get faster through practice and through repetition. So I really like to stand here, stand straight while I'm auditing my listings and be able to just knock out as many as possible. So if you're, doing your uh, listings from your phone that's okay but keep in mind you know having your neck and you know you slouched over over time is going to end up giving you a lot of neck pain and you know i do believe the app for ebay 
on your phone was developed for buyers, not for sellers. So that's why you see a lot of things that kind of glitch out and have errors when you do listings on your phone, but there's nothing wrong with it. I just say, keep in mind that over time, you're going to be naturally, unless you're doing your listings like this on your phone, you know, straight up, straight away, uh, parallel, um, it's gonna, your, your natural progression is gonna be you know, your neck's gonna hurt. That's, that's all I'm saying. And if you're doing your listings like maybe from a laptop, you know, you have to keep in mind your wrists for carpal tunnel syndrome and also just other ways to, you know, help you guys with your health, you know, because I do think that photos and listing, I know it doesn't seem like you're chipping concrete and out 90 degrees and digging trenches, but at the same time, if you are spending hours a day doing your listings, you're gonna wanna keep that in mind. I have here an anti-fatigue mat with my trusty on-cloud shoes, so I can be able to be comfortable when I'm doing my listings. That's all I'm really kind of sharing with you about your listing station. I do think that it is important to have a listing station in general, because if you don't, then you're gonna to have to be setting up any anytime you wanna knock out some listings. So keep in mind, where do you see yourself in your reselling business one or two or three years down the road? You might want to invest in those things now so you can help your health out and you can also get a lot faster at your listing. Things. All right, another bag had sold. What a blessing. Uh, Timbuk2 sold this backpack for what we sell for $30 plus shipping. So, really moving a lot of these bags out. It's really nice to see. This Nike women's tank top sold for $7.46 plus shipping. Hey, hey, this vintage Old Navy t shirt surprisingly sold for $10.46 plus shipping. These Under Armour women's camo spandex shorts sold for $10 plus shipping. These Style & Co women's denim shorts sold for $3.63 plus shipping. Another women's Nike shirt. This had sold for $5.98 plus shipping. This women's top by the brand Cactus sold for $10 plus shipping. This vintage sleeveless hoodie sweater for men uh, by the brand Enough sold for $14 plus shipping. This Nicholas State College t-shirt sold for $5.66 plus shipping. So this Calvin Klein underwear goes for a lot more money than the ones that I showed you previously. So two of those other types of Calvin Klein underwear sold for $17.95, but this one in particular, something special about it, it's the U1010 model, uh, made in also 2009. Uh, this sold for almost $40 plus shipping. So I sell a ton of plus size clothing, and one of my bread and butter brands within plus size clothing is Catherine's. Catherine's uh, women's kind of flowy top sold for $12 plus shipping. This men's St. John's Bay long sleeve shirt sold for $12 plus shipping. So I don't believe that life is about getting ahead of other people. I really do think that it is more to it than that. And I just say to you that never compare yourself to others and success should never be measured by what other people are doing. Success should be measured by what God is telling you to do. Because in essence, you could go along and have worldly success. But if you miss the whole point and purpose to life and you don't fulfill what God is telling you to do, in my opinion, then that is a complete failure. So don't compare yourself to others. Only compare yourself to yourself, you know, year after year, month after month. If you're getting better, then you're going to see the compound effect kick in and you're going to start making exponential growth. So never in your life should you be thinking, how am I going to get ahead of other people? Work on yourself. Work harder on yourself than you do at your job. Skill acquisition, developing skills in your gift and serving it to the world, there is literally nothing more beautiful than that. This is why I'm so passionate about helping people, helping people learn from my mistakes, learning from what I've done, where I've come from, because it's really a competition with yourself. So never stop adding value to yourself. Never stop you know, trying to just get better every day through consistency, through discipline, through adherence of your vision. So success, do not measure it 
by what other people are telling you or comparing yourself to others. Measure your success to what God has put in your heart and continue to take action on whatever your life's big dream is. Never quit and never give up. Here are some new with tag guest jeans, a pretty decent brand overall. These had sold for $28 plus shipping. Another Timbuktu kind of tote bag sold uh, just had listed this probably a couple days ago. It had sold for $34 plus shipping, an international order. This men's 4XL plaid shirt sold for, oh boy, $12.56 plus shipping. So 4XL, the brand is Redhead. And yeah, I love picking up big sizes. Not a sock seller by any means, but did find a bunch of these uh, Patagonia wool socks uh, in the storage unit buyout. This is nine pairs of Patagonia socks, sold for $58 plus shipping. All right, these Chico's women's jeans sold for $12.56 plus shipping. If you guys are wanting to know what brands that I'm always on the lookout for that are really kind of hard to find, you're gonna wanna check out this video right here where it goes over the top 50 brands that I'm constantly on the lookout for. I do that because the next time you go out sourcing, maybe you can find some of those items as well. I hope you all have a beautiful, blessed day. And enjoy the rest of your week. Take care.